Live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Welcome back everyone, live here in Las Vegas for IBM uh, Insight. This is a wrap up day one of theCUBE's wall to wall coverage here at IBM Insight. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out through the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, my co-host this week, and we had a great guest. We had Steve Mills on earlier, we had Inhee Chusa, couldn't get her in because we had a celebrity. Um, we had Katie Lindendahl, um, awesome, you know, correspondent for CNN, former ESPN, but in he, Today he, Show. He will be back tomorrow She'll be morning. back tomorrow. We had Ray Wang on, we had an analyst. We had a lot of analysis. We had some startups. Catalogic is a hot company, I love that. Um, Jim Kobielus, the big data analyst. Um, Bob Picciano, who was really stellar today. I thought he was on his game day, big time. I thought Kirk Bourne was really good too, the astro Physics professor from Franz uh, Dill, George Mason. who worked at Procter and Gamble. So we had some heavies on today. I really feel like we accomplished a really good good program. I think you know I learned a ton, and I was really excited. We had some super geeks on who could look back and look at a historical perspective, kind of where we've come from in data, data science, and how it's gone mainstream. So you know, and again, we had the executives in laying out laying out the then. Steve Mills was was awesome, just laying it all out there. So um, very cool. Would you? What's yeah, your the thoughts? content at. at Insight, what used to be I, IODs, it's always really good. You get a good mix. I agree, Mills nailed it. I mean, he was very forthcoming, right? He basically said, look, we got, we got slow growth or no growth businesses. He didn't say businesses that are in decline. Um, many of them are, but that's probably a one-time anomaly. He doesn't look at it that way. But it basically was you know, transparent about it. He said, look, we got huge, but delivering billions of dollars, but we're a $100 billion company. So it's going to take some time. I, I actually, I'm confident that IBM's going to get through this little bump, John. I mean, yeah. I've seen it before. IBM's in way better shape now than they were in the last like huge transformation. Much, much better shape. In here's my here's why I love what IBM's doing. I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm really critical when it needs to be critical, and I am not afraid to to lay down some some cover fire on that. IBM is not failing. Okay, I think Wall Street really is misunderstanding IBM. IBM might need to move a little faster and kind of like you know get second gear going pretty quickly on this. But you heard Steve Mills at the end of the conversation, and if you go to, if, you, if you're watching this and haven't seen the video, go to YouTube, look at Steve Mills, 2014 Insight. At the end, I asked him a specific question about Watson, and he went on for a good 15 minutes. He is excited, Dave. You saw his inflection of his voice kicked up. That's a software guy who's saying, this is so exciting. I mean, he, Steve could say, hey, you know, I'm done, I'm hit the beach. You know, he's a player, man, he brought, you know, he's like, this is super exciting. And then he went on to elaborate on how difficult Watson is to do and how game changing it is. So um, I think it's kind of an interesting lull right now. IBM's gotten hammered on Wall Street from the whole earnings debacle. Um, and I think that's just trigger happy Wall Street. Hedge funds kind of figuring out, I mean, maybe it's not a short, is it a long? How do I make the play? And well, I think IBM missed, you know, when it was a pretty bad miss. I mean, they missed top line revenue by a billion dollars. I mean, that's, you know, Wall Street's going to punish you for that. And, you know, in, the, in Wall Street world, the first disappointment is often never the last. But, so the question is, never to me, never, it, never, never miss a good crisis, right? Well, right, no, I agree. And so that's the point, is it's a buying opportunity. It's just a matter of when. It's always hard to time these things, well, Buffett right? backs so, out, so that's interesting. What's that? You know, Warren Buffett backs out of his investment. Well, you, you know, I, I think that, you, you, you have to put together your investment criteria and, and make the call. So there are certain things you want to see from IBM. Uh, the stabilization of some of those you know, slower growth businesses, the critical mass of the new businesses, you know, Watson getting more than you know, a couple of hundred clients, you want to see them into the thousands and tens of thousands. The thing about Watson, John, is this, there's virtually no competition there. I mean, there will be. But yeah, the rich keep getting richer. That was your theme. I really like that line that you brought up and you had uh, some other good comments I thought were fantastic um, around the same thing. Inflection point, we heard um, Bob Picciano really school us on, hey, don't, there's a shift and an inflection point. Know the difference, there's a nuance. Shift, everyone moves, inflection point, things are happening in parallel. Context computing, okay? Um, really interesting, and that, that's inflection point around, around cognitive. Insight is in the data and versus business process improvement. Speed, we heard from um, uh, the survey folks. Speed is the number one thing people want, not 
concept, it's like moving into production. This is the future of IBM, this whole digital world, as Ray Wang pointed out. Immersion of augmented reality, with Oculus Rift, this is the new game-changing environment, this new software around these new user experiences. And finally, Steve Mills said, it's in the cloud, it's on-premise, it's hybrid, in between, and there's an evolution around the information technology. And that was key. And at the end, though, he said, it's about the CAMs. CAMS, C-A-M-S, cloud, cloud analytics, analytics, mobile, mobile security, and social. security, and social. And that is what they're betting on. So Dave, there it is. I, um, I want to talk about the markets we were, we were riffing on Wall Street. I think that um, we had the Alibaba top in the market in September, and then we come into October, and October is always nasty. We're coming to the end of October. In October, you, you had a couple of misses. You know, IBM missed. Um, there was some uh, disappointment around Amazon. So, you, so the street is really confused. So when IBM missed, it took down all these hot companies like ServiceNow, like Workday, like Tableau. And then uh, ServiceNow blew it out of the park. You saw you know, Frank Slootman's announcement. We bet on Frank, Frank's, <laughs> Frank's a good bet. And then all of a sudden they bounce back and now they're off a little bit, some profit taking. People are really confused about the enterprise. It's like you said earlier today, John, you were right on. The enterprise is hard. You can't just throw your hat in and say, okay, I'm going to go after the enterprise. It's really, and complicating things is this bifurcation of you got the born in the cloud, born big data, and you got these legacy companies. But my, I tell you, I look at this and I say, the, as, as you just said, I said earlier, the rich keep getting richer. It's just a matter of how fast they can transition. And I think these companies are going to continue to do well. They're going to continue to throw off cash. I, and I like the way IBM's positioned. Uh, I mean, I think there may be some near-term pain, but mid-term, I, I really like IBM. I do, I think Wall Street is always trigger happy, but I think the cloud market, I think they lost some margin. There's a, there's a cost of transitioning, and IBM moving quickly and making the big bets. And, then, and they're moving quicker now, but they're not really shifting, Dave. This is not a deviation. We've been at IBM Edge. We saw IBM Edge on the storage side certainly get transformed. Then you see, the, then you see Impact Pulse, IOD now Insight. I mean, if you look at what they've done, they've been on, they've been on a focused mission. Their North Star has always been analytics. Yeah, they've cleaned, cleaned it up on the execution side, went from concept to vision, execution, tactics, and now you're seeing some meat on the bone. There's a rumored announcement coming on Wednesday. It's supposed to be game changing. 4.5 on the Richter scale from what we're hearing. I mean, I've been speculating it's something with Cisco. I mean, I don't know if that's the case or not. I do, I do think IBM selling its, its x86 business to Lenovo opens up the doors for something with Cisco, although indications are it's something else. Um, if, you know, we were, we were riffing on Apple. I, I mean, I, I, on the Richter scale, I, I, I kind of agree with you. Apple, 1.5, 2, interesting, but you know, we'll see. Um, I, I hope this is bigger. So, I, so interesting, you know, I asked Ray Wang a question, pointed question, you know how I get with some of these pointed questions, always an underlying sub-question involved. So I want to ask you the same thing. We talk about, you know, I look at, you know, what, um, what it takes to win, right? Leadership, go to market, that's clean. Certainly cost-wise, cost per order dollar, however you want to look at it, direct sales, indirect sales, an innovation engine, technology leadership, and confidence in the value proposition that customers will buy and you can, you can win with that. So I got to ask you, Dave, let's go down and let's talk, discuss, let's evaluate yeah. the leadership. I, I, IBM, I, they're not asleep at the switch. I mean, I think they got muscle. No, Steve I, Mills is going to make some moves and We'll, I want to see what his bets are. And I think with these larger companies, you have to throw in M&A prowess. I mean, this is the one, of the, one of the things where somewhat critical, more than somewhat critical on with HP, is he's got to have M&A prowess. Who's really good at M&A? IBM's really good at M&A. <coughs> uh, 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 Oracle's really good at M&A. EMC and VMware I don't like really good I don't like IBM's M&A, I got to tell you. Why, I, I, I love I IBM's don't like, Why I do you say that? I'm, I like, okay. I like IBM's M&A, but right now I don't like it. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you why I don't like it. The market's moving too fast. There are some things, they got to have a horse in the game now as a placeholder, because IBM's got a lot of muscle. If they get too arrogant and do but just tuck specific, unders. Be specific, what don't you, okay. soft layer? You don't like soft layer? No, I like soft layer, yeah, I like soft you layer. Because you were not really so sanguine. Uh, no, that woke me up to that. I was not happy with soft layer. I didn't see the logic there, bare metal, hosting, there wasn't certainly no cloud at all, but with hybrid, you can argue bare metal's a service, it's a natural progression, I can see the progression there. And then I can see the assets coming around. That's not a tuck under, right? That's almost a billion dollars right there. So I think that you is Think what about the big acquisitions IBM's made. PwC was a phenomenal acquisition. Cognos, what, a very what year good was acquisition. That? 
94. No, I'm talking about within the past five years. Let's, wait, wait, let's wait. stay in this solar system, okay? Okay, Cognos, you know. still sort of early 2000s, right? Um, past five years. No, no, sorry. Um, I, I take that back. PwC was after 2000 because Carly tried to buy it. But so I'm not saying do the EMC like a lot of tuck-ins, right? A lot of small little little deals. IBM is sort of tight when it comes to acquisitions. They have very tight IRR, so I like their financial. They're in, they're I, a good I think, M&A company. I think, I think what don't you like about IBM's m and I don't understand. I think they're too small of deals. I, think, I want to see them do bigger deals. I think these tuck-unders are great from a product standpoint. Look, at here's the deal with, with M&A. There's two types of M&As. There's, I need market position. There's three types of M&As. Market position, pure like EMC, like I'm going to buy data domain and be a money machine and, and crank the cash register. Market position and then product tuck-unders where they say, hey, that's a startup, I'm going to pay 50 million, 100 million, 200 million, 20, okay. 30, 100 employees. I like this conversation. So let's, so I said, okay, okay M&A is like one. <laughs> M&A is one. Now the other is developers, right? Yeah. Okay, so. How would I rate developers? Yeah, with IBM. I think, I give IBM a good position. I think they need to modernize a little bit, but they're doing it. I see they got a developer heritage. IBM is a developer heritage. They, if you go back and look at all the successes on the database side, software, certainly in open source, they've done really well. I think IBM is one of those heavy hitters in the developer community that doesn't flex their own muscles and I think they're going to do well there. Um, so I don't think there's any So I would think, I, was, I thought you were going to say something different. I thought you were going to say M&A to help development. Maybe, I would like to see IBM get more aggressive in the software space, the application software space. I, think, no, they're, I, I they, think they're lagging on the developer side on the cloud for well, sure. Well this is what I'm saying. So what about, I mean, Salesforce too big, right? That's too big of a nut to swallow, but that but would be a I blockbuster I think Salesforce move. is vulnerable, but IBM could take them out. I mean, IBM has social business. They have a lot of the stuff that's been playing in the enterprise software. If they can move quickly in the cloud developer shift, and this is where I think they need to sharpen the saw on, on developers, is the cloud developers. I think Amazon's winning, but I don't think, you know, if Amazon moves to the enterprise before IBM tools up in the cloud, you know, IBM could be in a world of hurt there, so I think, if they get the developers in the cloud, social business, they could go instantly after Salesforce and win against Oracle. So if you look at Oracle, Salesforce, around marketing cloud and um, human capital management, not from a workflow standpoint, I'm talking about engagement standpoint. They could change the game on those guys right there and put a dent in that market, in my opinion. Well, and so where IBM should have some developer mojo is with Watson, right? We heard from Steve Mills, you know, the opening up of, of, of Watson in terms of developer's ability to, because you said, who really cares about the hardware that's underneath? They really don't care. I think Watson could, Watson could Ray. literally destroy Salesforce. Literally could change the game on Oracle. They could automate their core business and reduce the steps and just decimate and go to the customers with a value proposition of <laughs> double the performance for half the price. I mean, literally that kind of functionality. So Watson is something that if it can materialize in the way that they're talking about with intent computing, context aware, semantic, and then cognitive computing, you know, that's a game changer. That will certainly change the dynamics because they can come in and commoditize so, competition so let's talk about and cloud. innovate at the same let's time. Let's talk about cloud. So we think, we think about cloud, you got to talk about Amazon. You know my position on Amazon, that, that they are going to have the volume, the marginal cost of Amazon infrastructure as a service in this whole race to zero. Amazon, Google, Microsoft have the advantage there. Now, a company like Oracle, who's going heavy into cloud, has the additional advantage of pricing power because they own the database and the application. IBM, to a lesser extent, but they certainly have database. Mm, with a lot, they got a lot of SaaS, but not to the extent that, that, that uh, Salesforce or, or an Oracle has that SaaS mojo. But they could develop that same kind of pricing power in the stack. Not, not could, they have to, in my opinion, to be a player. So I think IBM can do it, I think Oracle can do it, HP, We'll see, because HP, in my view, is purely infrastructure yeah, as, I mean, as a service and pass. You were just at the HP event the other night. Yeah, HP's what, what got What are your thoughts on, on HP and cloud? Well, HP's cloud is really, really getting good. Um, I need to look under the covers, look at the infrastructure side, but I think it's going to be solid. You know, the only thing I see about the cloud is this whole Cloud Foundry aspect of it. I'm really nervous that Cloud Foundry is really their bed in the ranch on. So they're, they're putting all their eggs in one basket with Cloud Foundry and betting on Paul Moritz. So that is a huge deal for IBM to put everything on Cloud Foundry. And it's a win for Cloud Foundry because Cloud Foundry's federation now increases. So the risk though there, Dave, in my opinion is, IBM and HP truly don't have their own clouds. 
They're buying into a federation transport model, and that's just to me. I would never go down that road. I was a software it's guy. It's great for EMC in the federation. Great for isn't EMC. It? Isn't it awesome. I mean, it's a, like a leech around. It's a it's a complete win for EMC and VMware. Pivotal. How was Pivotal able to pull that off? In that's Paul opinion? Moritz right there. I think Paul Moritz came in pulled the godfather move with, you know, if you look at Paul Moritz, who's never been on the Cube, by the way, I don't know why he won't come on the Cube. Steve Mills, you know, kicking butt on the Cube. Uh, Joe Tucci's over, been on the Cube. Joe Tucci's on the Cube. <laughs> uh, you know. Come on, Paul, come on the Cube. But Steve Mills, if you think about guys like Steve Mills, Paul Moritz, these are old timers, man. They've been like old timers like us. They've been around the block. They've seen this movie before and they're grandmasters. Imagine Moritz, Larry Ellison, Steve Mills, um, Joe Tucci, in a, around a table. What would they do? I mean, they'd just dominate if they were on one team. How about Michael right. Dell? You throw him in that mix? Yes, I think Michael Don't you Dell. Think? I think Michael Dell. <laughs> the moves he made. If Michael made. Dell put a posse together, that would be dangerous. And I think, you know, I just don't see his posse. He's got Marius Haas, who I think is a hitter. You've got Sam Greenblatt, who's a hitter. You know, if Michael can put those kinds of hitters around him, then it's different damage. I think they can kick some ass. Dell's got the eye of the tiger. He understands how to compete, he understands how to win. I mean, I'm, I'm really a big fan of Michael Dell because you know, he's a winner, I mean, no doubt. He certainly got complacent over the years, made billions of dollars, but now taking Dell private to me, I give him a lot of props for that. Yeah, he's not complacent now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. All right, well, good day today, John. Dave, startup community, what's your take on, on the East Coast? What's going on? I, I think the East Coast startup community continues to be you know, in the shadow of the West Coast. I think New York is where the action is. Um, I think that um, that's still Silicon Valley, you know, Internet of Things, cloud, SaaS, you know, it's exploding out in Silicon Valley. Like I say, New York, New York's actually looking pretty good in the developer community. You know, bits and pieces and pockets coming out of MIT. So big data NYC, what's your takeaway? You guys were down there in New York City. Obviously, we're in an analytics show here. What is the, what is the um, you know, the Wikibon community now really winning in the analyst market around Wall Street, you know, as O'Reilly Media, really kind of goes in and talks to the geeks. Wikibon has really established themselves, Dave, as really the capital market's choice of, of analysts firms. Well, I think our strategy, John, has always been to focus on the, on the business and the business value and business outcomes, and, and that's really what we did at Big Data NYC. I think you saw a couple of themes. One is that Hadoop comes to the enterprise, Hadoop meets the enterprise. The enterprise is really coming to Hadoop, so the average age of the folks that are attending things like Hadoop World is going up. Um, and I think that's bringing in disciplines around data warehousing, uh, data integration, the old ETL business, it's mashing together with some of these new ones. I think what you're seeing there, John, is for every dollar that was being spent on the traditional data warehouse and BI business, that, that's being baseline now. And what I see and what we see in our research is that for every dollar that was spent there, people are spending 30 cents on the new stuff. So it's not a one for one replacement. So there's, a, there's, a, there's headwinds in the, in the legacy business and the new business isn't growing fast enough. Now the bet is the data volumes are going to be so high that that 30 cents in the dollar is going to be more than triple in terms of the volume so the business will be there and it will more than you know, offset the, the softness in the traditional data warehousing business. Um, but nonetheless, that's really what's happening. And so you're seeing that big transition now. The other thing you're seeing is you're still, not seeing a lot of software companies that are, that are public or are going to be going public anytime soon. Probably my guess is John Hortonworks is going to be the first. I think you'll see Hortonworks you know, maybe announce an IPO if the market conditions are right before the end of the year. I think they have to start thinking about doing that. Um, and maybe MapR2 uh, right behind them. Uh, uh, Cloudera, as you know, no. And so I think the big data market is still a services-led market. 45% of the, the revenue in big data is services. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Software is only about 20% of it because so much of the software is open source. So people are still trying to figure out how do I make money in big data? And the answer is by applying big data. It's Uber, it's Fitbit, it's Zipcar, it's Airbnb. These are the companies that are the new value producers in big data. Obviously Amazon, Google, and Facebook are the poster children, but there are many, many others emerging. That's where the money is. That's where the investment thesis, I think, needs to go. How well are these pe people leveraging this digital matrix that's emerging? Dave, great analysis. Again, what a great day today. We've got a big day tomorrow. Inhi Chusa, Vice President, Rising Star within IBM. She's going to sit down with us. She's a CUBE alumni. You probably know her 
from the multiple interviews we've done. She's awesome. We got again a stellar lineup. We got Carla Gentry coming on, data nerd. She's one of the influencers. And again, we're live here inside the digital experience lounge for the second screen, for the people online who aren't at the event and want to get that experience in the moment. This is theCUBE, we're live, and we'd like to bring you all the great interviews. Obviously, a lot of influencers out there. Look for Brian Fonzo, variety of others. Veronica Belmont's hosting her own awesome, kind of cool vibe here. She's fantastic, good to see her, and I've seen her in years, and, and she's just a really great social broadcaster. I really like her a lot there, she's super cool. And of course, IBM's got a lot of coolness going around, so if you're an influencer or a blogger, podcaster, want to do some crowd chats, it's all wide open. Really excited, Dave, looking forward to tomorrow. So if you're watching tomorrow, you're going to have a lot more action coming your way. Thanks for watching, that's a wrap from day one. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE.